We're going to talk about the second altcoin of 2021, which I think is undervalued. Let's go. So hi everyone, welcome to the channel. If you are new, please do subscribe, hit that bell button, like and leave a comment. There's a lot of people not subscribed to the channel. Please make sure you do. Very, very close to 25,000, which is absolutely unbelievable. So hopefully let's see what we can get by the end of the year. So... Reserve Rise, this is another one of my token holds. Not all of these in this list will be token holds that I hold, but I've got to cover this one. I think this is massively undervalued, and over the next coming year or two, certainly when Mainnet launches, certainly when it gets more adoption with its use case, because I think this got one of the best use cases in the world right now in crypto, essentially. I think this could be good. Now, we need to talk about it. What is it? If you've never heard about it before, Reserve Rights, I'm going to show you what it is and we're going to talk about the charts as well before we leave essentially so it's going to be a very very quick roundup it's going to be a very very quick when to invest and a potential price prediction in terms of market capitalization not so much price so let's go anyways it's new it's relatively new realistically in my opinion it's relatively new to the space it's only been out well just over a year 18 months give or take so it's not really got that prestige yet of time in the market and the main net launch sometimes slow burners are the best in my opinion especially in this space when you look and compare to the previous elements of markets and cycles it's good to have something with a good solid foundation a good solid team a good solid investment base and most importantly good solid use case i hate it when coins just bang straight off the bat with no product that makes it really really awful so Let's talk about it. Price action. It's doing very, very well. And I still think even with the good positive price action, as you can see here over the, the course of 2020, it's still undervalued in my honest opinion. So let's talk about what is it? So first things first, what is it? It is a flexible pool of stable coins designed to reduce the risk through diversification and decentralized governance. So we think of the world of inflation, stimulus, money prints, all kinds of backed back bailout loans and stuff. It creates this thing called inflation and it can get very, very bad and go, go into hyperinflation. We've got all kinds of figures on this in a minute. So essentially the, the basic use cases, by the way, watch that video, it's pretty cool. The whole purpose of this is to protect your money, your assets, to send money across borders and accept anything easily in terms of payment okay so you got problems with hyperinflation that could be a problem we know that we've got a problem with sending money that could be deemed a problem if it is in those situations i.e inflation and obviously to be able to accept things very very easily to use something away from that damaged you know currency with something that is positive that is backed and actually works this is what reserve right is aiming to do Moving down in terms of like roadmaps, I'm not going to show the roadmap. It's you know it's a roadmap in terms of white papers and stuff like that. You don't need to really see, look at the white paper to see where they're going with this in terms of direction of how fast things are progressing in the world and why. In my opinion, this is very very important. So overall, there's going to be two tokens: RSV, which is a stable currency. This is the one you do not invest in. This is the one that you would use if you are in certain said countries, which we will come on to in a minute. The stable currency that is, you know, economically backed and legally, keyword, robust at any scale, decentralized, 100% backed and funded by top Silicon Valley investors. I will come on to that in a minute. And then you've got the RSR, the reserve right token, the one that I'm talking about here, the one that you could potentially be investing in if you so wish to, not financial advice, but this is what I'm showing you. Now, this is a fluctuating protocol and it plays a role in stability of this, this bad boy here. So if it goes above a dollar or below a dollar, it will be used to make sure it is stable. Real assets will be on there, which is really cool. So moving on to the next part of this, I mentioned before the core money problem of anything, right? This country's here with their annual inflation rate. Venezuela, South Sudan, um, Dominican uh, Republic of Congo, you got obviously Argentina, Libya, Angolia, Sudan. I've been to a few of those countries in my military time. Not ideal, and yes, I've been to South Sudan, I've been to Libya, and I've also been to um, Yemen as well. Yeah, the currencies are mental. I've also been to Sierra Leone, which also has had problems in the past. So with that, this gives you an idea. 
a huge element of obviously decentralization is needed. We all know that there's a thing in cryptocurrency called scarcity, absolute scarcity as well, as you, as you could describe it as well, where we know that they cannot be a, you know, a con continued life cycle of belt feed and money out. With fiat currencies, we know that's a problem. So this is what their aim is. Now, when you look at how you know, it works. You've obviously got the centralization phase where you've got collateral tokens, which is tokenized by the US dollar, which is kind of where we are right now. You've obviously then got the decentralized phase where the reserve is backed by a changing basket of assets in a decentralized way used to respect and stabilize that US dollar price. And then you've got the independent phase, right? Where reserve is no longer pegged to the US dollar, which is key, and being able to be, you know, stabilized throughout its own asset token value, which is kind of where we need to be, which is where it's going to go. As you can see here, the tokens, as I've already mentioned here, you've got RSV, you've got RSR, and then you've got collateralized tokens where this is like that basket, that, that element of reserve where it is ability to, you know, stick to that level pegging without worrying about what the US dollars do, not worrying about what, you know, that level of fundage is belt feeding it will do it on its own element in a decentralized way away from that peg which is perfect in some ways yes it'll be pegged at one dollar but it's not going to be pegged at that dollar if that makes sense yeah simple anyways moving on into what i see is the most important thing obviously here have a little look this is kind of how it works a step by step element and the, the element of tokenized assets real life assets to be able to be used is also key so it's not going to be on to that one point of failure essentially so if things go wrong well yeah you got a problem moving on to the investment side of it now this is where i obviously mentioned before it's backed by top silicon valley elements and people and companies whatever institutions obviously you got here you can see sam altman very very big angel investor in airbnb stripe reddit obviously pinterest loads coinbase ventures top tip there's probably going to be a Coinbase listing at some point in the future due to that. Uh, Peter Frill, co-founder of PayPal. Hmm, PayPal are in this industry. We know that now. And hello, we have an individual body who is backing this to the hill. Crypto Lotus, you've got all kinds. Of Jack Selby as well, founding member of PayPal. You've got loads of people here that have got real, real life experience in the world of, you know, electronic payments, finance, all that kind of stuff. Here as well, Eric um, Eric M. Jackson, obviously Ma VP Marketing of PayPal. You can probably see the trend here. Um, who else have we got? We've got some huge names, realistically, when you think about it. Um, Jeff Morris, <laughs> product of Tinder. Yay. But also included investments in Compound Finance, Blockfolio, Ocean Protocol, and Crypto Kitties. So, yeah. You know, I don't have to go too far into this in terms of like you looking at this and thinking, well, actually, there's some real big back in here. And this list, by the way, keeps growing. <laughs> Every time I come to this page, it keeps adding people. There we go. Principal partner of and financial financial director of paper, uh, Visa. Sorry. Boom. So it's looking quite good, isn't it? I know. Moving on to the world of um, where was I going to go here? I can't even remember now. Can't remember. Here we go. Initial back in. Okay, coins. Initial circulating supply. So this has been around for a while now, as you can see, May 2019. There's still no mainnet yet. Mainnet is not here yet. So you've got initial circulating supply, as you can see here. But the thing that I want to talk about here is this. People always ask about these. Now, this is in a slow wallet. It's not even moved yet. So one thing to note, the team have not got their tokens yet. That's until mainnet is launched. That is perfectly valid. That is fine. The transferring of those will happen at some point in the future, right? Reward for doing all the hard work. 55% of the total supply may never be used. It may not be even on the exchanges. It'll be used for different elements of developments going on into the future, into their future back-end projects and all kinds of stuff for the future. That doesn't mean that it's going to get dumped on the market. That doesn't mean it's going to get sold at all or in circulating supply. So we could probably presume that maybe 55% 56% of the tokens may never even hit the market. That's interesting. They could be sold, burnt in other different ways to the ability that it will raise funds for future developments. That is key. Moving on to how to see that. This is a contract here. As you can see here, a lot of money in there, but nothing's moved. Realistically, hardly anything has moved at all in the ability of this. Obviously, you can see here, and the one thing about this, which I do like, they have to give a one month notice 
that they are going to move anything, which is kind of important. Moving on to obviously the contract, the, that's a contract that was when it was created. So it's all there, right? All the information is on that website, transparent and good, right? The biggest bare bone that I have with any project is they hide little things like this. They hide the fact of how many of the tokens are actually on the market, what the tokens of like the founders and stuff have got. This is all there. So let's talk about investment style. So as always, we've got to try and invest when it is undervalued. In my opinion, undervaluation is always key. Now I'm waiting for it to go lower. I'm not bothered overall about it going next week to the moon. I want this to be as low as possible to get a decent sized bag. I, by my own admission in previous videos, I've said this as well. I don't have a big enough bag of RSR. I just, I always say it, I need a bigger bag. So I'm hoping it goes down in price, but personally, I still think this is majorly undervalued even at this current length, which we'll talk about in a minute. But when you look at where it's been, top side, yearly and all time high has been roughly just over three cents. We've actually topped out recently about 2.6 cents, not too bad. And if you're wondering what these bulls and bears are, that's the Hitman indicator. So if you want to trade off just that alone, you can. You can be very, very profitable. It is very, very good. Link in the description. Anyways, I firstly feel that we are going to retrace this entire move. I think this is a potential top area, but it could also be a nice retracement for a potential run anyway. So if we're looking at a potential upswing move to the top side, we have hit this 618 at a perfect level. We could actually be going for another retest of this level, but I also think we could be coming down as well overall if this is a local top. But you got to remember, the altcoin market is looking very, very bullish and we could see some moves in the USD market or maybe the BTC pair of this do well. So we've got to look at this at you know, a different sort of situation. Situation A is the obvious here. We have got a downtrend, right? That is one thing we've got to look at. We've got to see, well, could it retrace? Yes, it could easily. So just be careful and be ready for some potential low orders. Now, where would you buy? In my opinion, if you go down to the weekly time frame, if you remove some of the noise, by the way, look at where key levels have kind of stopped and turned around. Look at this level here. Look at the way these wicks have stopped and turned around and where wicks have been around. Look at these levels. Look at the weekly time frame and start looking. But if you're looking for an obvious kind of level, if you go for the weekly time frame and you're going to go for it, look at the Fibonacci. Where is it going? 618 levels at 12, uh, 0 0.12 cents could be a very, very key number in the future. You've also got the 50% as, um, roughly where it stopped and turned around 4.6. And then you've got 0.9 of where we are and we've just dropped below. So in my opinion, if you're going to look for things, look at what this Fibonacci is doing from this low starting point all the way up to this top and then retracement. Now we have retraced all the way down to the six, uh, 786 before in the past. We bounced and we're looking likely to carry on going up. Still an uptrend by the way, but I still think that we are going to retrace a little bit more, in my opinion, down to these EMAs and down into this little level here. So we could lose about 10%. If it gets even worse, which I kind of hope it does, 30%, <laughs> potentially down to this 618 into this point, 0 0.128 potentially. So get an eye on that level. So that's what I think overall. Now these, um, you know, as you can see here with these we, with these levels here, this is just a retracement of this, this bounce. So don't get too ignored by those, but this could be a very, very interesting area as well, just below that. So where can we go in the future? I've already talked about it in terms of potential elements of like long term. Now, I like to compare this. Now, some people say the same thing as me i like to compare this to xrp right the reason being similar sort of token supplies i.e if 55 percent of this is locked up you're going to have a similar sort of supply so it'd be roughly about 45 percent on the market 55 percent chilling out right so that'd be 45 billion right xrp is currently at huge price levels in my opinion it could go a lot higher it has been a lot higher what if rsr does an xrp i.e not go up to three dollars but actually trickles up to 60 cents right that would give it a very very nice market capitalization and it could be in my opinion very possible you got to remember here xrp has got 45 billion tokens in supply it's currently sitting at 27 billion dollars valuation when you look at the use case the backers who's involved in rsr i personally think that 177 million market cap is low I see RSR being easily a top 20 coin, 
easily into the billions, 5 billion plus in my honest opinion, at least if you're thinking of a bull market. Current situations, over 1.4 billion to get in the top 20. I see a lot of rubbish, in my opinion, in this top 20 that should not be in there, but a solid use case like RSR, in terms of the ability to send money, to protect money, to be able to help people in need, and it is backed by the likes of Coinbase, PayPal, big, massive people from previous big companies who have invested in huge companies that we take for granted every single day, is, in my opinion, a solid starting point. There's no mainnet yet. Yeah. When there's a mainnet, ooh, we could get some very, very interesting information coming out about that very, very soon. When that is going live, I expect this to go hard and rally, but I personally want it to go a little bit lower to see where it can go. But my overall prediction for the future, I see this easily into the billions of market cap. Now, that would give it an easy 5x, in my opinion, but I think it'll go a lot higher than that. I think a 10x, 20x, maybe even a 50x on this easily, in my opinion, because of what it is. The use of cryptocurrency getting used in a, you know, a crisis situation is kind of key. That is going to get a lot of eyeballs, especially when you see who is backing it. So, there we go. That is my pick number two for 2021, undervalued altcoins. And I'll see you again next week for number three.